You know, at the beginning of this year, I did not expect the 1850s to grab me the way that it has. I had one project that I just wanted to get off my plate, and then I was going to go back to the errors that I usually costumed. But here I am, getting ready to dive into making a full 1850s wardrobe, and of course the logical place to start is with the undergarments. I've been using an ancient bridal hoop ever since my first mid-Victorian costume, back when I was a mere 16-year-old baby costumer, and it is definitely showing its age. There are indelible stains, rips and tears, missing lace, mud stains, and the waist doesn't actually fit anymore. What it does have is the old style of hoop boning, which is two wires and a plastic casing, which I prefer over the flat steel hoop boning that is more commonly used today. I also really like the shape and proportions of the bridal hoop as they work really well with my body type. So a plan was born. Make a new, more historically accurate 1850s crinoline using the boning and proportions from the old bridal hoop. Looking at the few available extant crinolines from the 1850s, as well as any fashion drawings, advertisements, and even cartoons from the era, it seemed that the most common style in that decade was the open frame or cage. I, however, am a notorious klutz and knew without a doubt that I would put my foot right through that open framework and end up tumbling to the ground in a heap. So I decided to go with the open framework slash enclosed bottom bone style that was around, just not as prevalently as it was in later decades. Before taking the bridal hoop apart, I measured the size of each bone while it was still in the skirt, as well as the overall length of the skirt and the distance between each bone. So I discovered something while I was measuring out all of the bone lengths. The bottom bone is 135 inches in circumference, and that is significantly larger than the hoop circumferences that we're seeing in period. The average size of crinolines in the 1850s is between 90 and 120 centimeters, depending on how big you wanted your skirt, but they don't, they don't really ever get up to 135 inches. However, because I am generously proportioned, this measurement on me looks similar to smaller circumferences on smaller people. So instead of going down to the smaller circumference, I think I'm going to keep it at 135, even though that's not really a period measurement, just because it looks proportionally correct on me, but not going to be historically accurate. And I don't care. All right, so now that I have the measurements for each of my bones, I'm gonna use my one inch twill tape to make individual casings for each bone. One of the problems I had with the bridal hoop is because the bones overlapped without any sort of like way to stop them from moving, they would move past the ends of each other and kind of collapse in on themselves over the course of the day. And then the hoop would get smaller and the skirt would end up dragging and I'd end up falling over it. And this happened a lot. I fell over my skirts all the time. So I'm hoping that by creating the individual casings and then sewing them into place so they can't readjust themselves, that's gonna eliminate that problem. To make the bone casings, I cut a piece of twill tape that was twice as long as the hoop steel plus about an extra 10 inches. I folded the twill tape in half to double it and then stitched along the outer edges to create the casing. I then inserted the hoop steel into the casing and folded the extra inches down over the open end and stitched it in place. I only did this for the top four bones since the bottom two would be enclosed in fabric. To make sure I didn't accidentally step through the bottom two bones, I created a fabric panel for the bottom of the crinoline. Since the bottom circumference needed to be 135 inches, I took the width of the cotton fabric, which was 36 inches, and divided that into 135, which told me I needed to cut out roughly four panels of fabric. Since the cotton I was using was fairly lightweight, I decided to do a double layer of fabric and to create the boning channels by stitching them into the cotton itself, rather than applying twill tape to a single layer of cotton to create the casing. So I just realized that I assembled the bottom panel and put in the boning channels and everything but I didn't actually attach the tapes that are gonna hold the rest of the bones onto the skirt and I should have done that before I turned everything out inside out and pressed it so now I have to take everything apart put the tapes in and sew it back together I had decided on 12 tapes to hold the additional hoops, so I divided 135 by 12 and pinned a tape to each spot. 
The tapes were tucked between the two layers, and the open side was then sewn up and the whole thing turned right side out. The boning channels were then sewn along each outer edge, and the two bottom bones were inserted into the channels. Using the measurements from the old skirt, I measured up from the panel and marked the place that each bone would connect to the tapes. I then measured out the total length of the skirt and adjusted the length of the tapes accordingly. Using the original skirt measurements, I marked the appropriate length of each bone and then stitched the end of the bone down along the outside edges. Once all the bones were at the right circumference, I pinned them in place on the tapes. Okay, so now I have all of the bones pinned into place, but I don't know if you can tell on here. Thanks, Tib. But this bone is dipping slightly inward, so I need to take this one out, unpin it, and um, increase the circumference a little bit so that we won't have that little dip there. But then once that's done, I can start sewing them in place. All right, all of the hoops are adjusted and I'm much happier with this silhouette. So I think I'm gonna stick with this. I really wish I could adjust the top bone a little bit more, but it is actually pretty much as far out as it can go. But I don't think it's gonna be too big of a deal. I'm liking how this is looking. So now comes stitching it all in place. Each of these little intersections here take about five minutes to sew the top and bottom edge of the hoop onto the tape. So one hoop takes about an hour to attach. And even though the hoops get smaller in circumference as you get closer to the top, there's still 12 connections that need to be sewn. So it doesn't take any less time to do the top hoops. I have, so in all, I have now been sewing about two and a half hours and I still have to finish the majority of the next to top hoop and the top hoop. So I don't know if I'm gonna finish this tonight. I'm really hoping I will, but if I don't, then I might finish it over the next couple of days after work, but my hands are screaming. more historically accurate. I love this thing. It's so springy. Look at it go. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm gonna have to be careful when I'm dancing because that's a that could be a hazard. <laughs> the only kind of wonky thing is this top bone here. It's uh, pretty much the same measurement as my hip so it's a little snug here but I moved this bone out as far as it could go so there really isn't any more room to give here. Thankfully with a petticoat over it you can't tell at all and I'll show you. It's okay, 
sexy. Petticoat on, it looks just fine. So yeah, very, very, very pleased with this project and super excited to be able to really get into the 1850s now, dig in, make all sorts of things. I got so many plans, so many plans. There are gonna be many dresses this year. So exciting. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button below. And if you wanna see more sewing adventures, historical costuming events, and historical costuming adjacent goodness, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. I will see you in the next video. Bye.